Right, so I thought I'd do a video today just to sort of give you an overview of my pond build, all the things I've done and um, go through a couple of the mistakes that I've made along the way. Uh, I'll try and talk you through it, sort of everything in a bit of detail, but if anyone's got any questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer it. All my fish, they're all a little bit spooky at the moment. I've uh, just had to do a few scrapes. Um, been having a few issues at the moment, which I'll go into in a bit. But and now, just to add to that, I've got <laughs> found Costia on one of my fish as well. So I'm going to have to going to have to treat them with FMG. But they don't seem they don't seem too upset about it. So the actual pond itself uh, is made with sleepers. These sleepers are 120 mil thick, uh, 240 mil high and they were 2.4 long and then I've got some half ones there as well uh, so externally it's 2.5 meters by I think 3.7 and it's 1.2 meters deep uh, it's held together there's loads of rebar in it as well and then there's these long sleeper screws in the corners uh, I've lined it with 25 mil kingspan and the floor, there's a four inch bottom drain in there, but the bottom drain is not concreted. And then, um, one, one thing, I don't know how well you can see this without turning the air off. In fact, let me turn the air off quickly. As you can see, the, uh, the bottom of the pond isn't very flat and it's got a few wrinkles on there. Uh, the reason for that is, so I didn't concrete the bottom and when I was putting the liner in, I had some, I had quite a lot of rain to him when I put the drain in and when I put the liner in so sort of the bottom underneath all the mud got really sloshy and it meant when I put the liner in you sort of gone a bit lumpy underneath it's not really causing me any problems at the moment you see there is a few bits of dirt on the bottom there but generally after a few minutes they make their way into the drain especially when the air goes on so one of the bigger problems I've got is uh, I didn't put a base underneath this pond I didn't put a concrete collar under it and I probably should have done. I've had a little bit of settling on the pond. I don't know whether you can see that there, but the water level on this corner is pretty much right up to the uh, right up to the wood. Whereas the other corner it's probably three or four centimetres. So there's there's probably a good two centimetres difference between this corner and, and this one and it was totally flat when I built it. Uh, hopefully it won't cause me any problems in the future but you know time will tell so if you're thinking of doing one put a concrete collar in. Uh, I haven't had any bowing on the sleepers though. I don't know if you can see that there but a lot of people thought that Doing a pond this high out sleepers, you might get some bowing on the sleepers, but as you can see, they're, they're all still perfectly straight. Put that down to all the rebar I put in it. So the actual pond window, uh, it's only quite a small window. Uh, the actual piece of glass is one metre by 40 centimetres. Um, I'm really glad I put it in. You know, if you're thinking of doing it, it, it's not as hard to do as I was expecting. I'd definitely recommend people give it a go. Uh, I haven't used the frame. It's literally, there's just a wooden batten sitting underneath, which it's sitting on, which holds it flush against the uh, the Kingspan underlay. If you want to see any more, you know, about how I did the window, just, I've got a video on that, so make sure you check that out. And literally the, the liner is just sucked to the outside of the glass. But, had absolutely no leaks from that it's been absolutely fine the only thing that I wish I did was bring it up a little bit higher because where I've got the water level here when the fish are up and they're feeding they do quite often splash water over the top and onto here which is a little bit annoying and obviously I am a little bit worried about the potential of them jumping out from there I'm gonna get some jump guards on there so if you're gonna do it do it a little bit higher to the height of the top of your copings so the skimmer I've got in the pond, uh, this is an absolute koi skimmer. Uh, I had to make it a little bit narrower so it fits just over the sleepers. Uh, it 
it's quite an expensive skimmer but I think it's worth the money in my opinion it does a really good job it keeps like I mean as you can see keeps the surface totally clear you've got this weir plate on here which you can adjust um, and it's also got an overflow at the moment I've just cut some slots into it but I will be um, I will be cutting that flat at some point just haven't got around to it yet so it's a three inch outlet as you can see I've actually shut the ball valve off a little bit because it was drawing a lot of flow from the skimmer and less from the bottom drain but it's still taking quite a good flow off the surface there and it's catching any debris there's a three inch line there and that goes into the drum filter I'll talk you through that in a minute and that there there's the waste pipe and it also joins up with the drums waste and that goes down to my waist at the front this pipe here that's the air pipe for my bottom drain and then this is the four inch line for my bottom drain I've got a purge valve on here um, works really well I will show that in a in another video uh, but one thing I probably would have done differently if I could do it again was put the purge valve down a little bit lower um, the lower it is below the water level the more pressure it will get through it so although this works and it works fine uh, it probably would have been better if it was a bit lower so a quick look in the filter shed um, this is the filter I'm using this is a Profidrum Eco 4540 um, I will be doing some more videos on this at some point soon uh, to be honest I've been having absolutely loads of problems getting this up and running uh, I'll put in a couple of clips of, uh, of what's been happening just to show you right so I'm going to run a manual clean on the drum uh, it looks like it's probably about to clean anyway um, but you can see the water in there is clean at the moment we'll press manual clean and see what it looks like the water is going down the waste chute so that clean side now is dirty look at the state of that I mean that water is properly brown there's all kinds of bits in there I mean I don't want that going back round my filter every time I do a clean But yeah, I'm doing my best to get it sorted. I think it is just a setup issue. Uh, but I'm not really sure yet. I'll do some more videos on it, you know, when I know exactly what's happening. Um, it might be me, it might be the drum. Um, but yeah, there's a 40 watt amalgam UV in there. I've turned it off for now just because I don't want to get don't want to get blinded by it. And then I've got an Evolution Aquan 20k pump that's pumping back up to the shower. You can see I had to move the height of the drum and I had to drill another hole to put it, get it in the correct place. Um, that's going into my moving bed, which I'm having, again, I'm having all kinds of problems with this. Don't bother using an IBC, buy a proper one. Uh, it's really difficult to get all the K1 to move properly. And then as well as that, I'm having this problem. I'll, uh, I'll just show you this now. Right. So I've got a pretty fundamental problem with my IBC moving bed. As you can see there, the pump cage is under there, so none of that K1 is getting through. But the suction from the from the pump is holding that K1 against there, and that'll be restricting the flow quite a lot as well. Uh, I'm going to have to try and come up with some sort of new inlet or new filter cage for that, um, or I might just might just get rid of this IBC completely because I'm really struggling to get it moving properly anyway uh, interestingly you can see there is quite a bit of dirt on the bottom of this IBC and this is after the drum so that's all stuff that's got through from the drum or been shedded by the K1 um, but if you watch this here as soon as I turn the pump off that will all float back up there you go look all that K1 has been held there by the uh, by the suction on the pump. You can see how much dirt's in that as well. All those little bits of dirt, and that's either 
it's either coming off the K1 or it's coming through the drum, one or the other. Here's the other side of my field shed. As you can see, I've got all my koi stuff in there. I've got all my treatments, bits and bobs in there. My water testing kit there. I've got my microscope. I've got some salt, which I do my best not to use unless I have to. Um, a few bits of media I couldn't get in the shower. I've got two air pumps up there. That one's doing the bottom drain. That one's running in the moving bed at the moment. And I've also got a spare one there as well, just in case I ever have any problems. And then I've got a little bit of space here for my koi food and treats, but that's about it really in the shed. If you haven't seen my last video, uh, this is an EasyPod mod disc. What it does is compresses the media in an EasyPod, helps it catch a few more finds. I used to use this on my old pond, worked really well. And if you want a chance to win this, uh, check out my previous video for a chance to enter. Uh, I'm going to let that run until Sunday the 4th of April. Uh, and then I'll draw a video and put something out for that. It'll either be the evening of the Sunday or on the Monday, sometime on the Monday. Uh, so if you, yeah, if you haven't entered already, check out my previous video and enter that if you, if you want a chance to win it. Right, and then this air source heat pump, I've been having a few problems with it, to be quite honest. Um, it's not been holding the temperature at what it's supposed to be. It's letting the parameters go up and down from where it's where it's set. I mean, I know it's really warm today, and it's in fact it's actually set on 15. It's now 16.6, but that's that's because of the uh, it's because of how hot it's been today. But um, yeah, I've had the guys from Remora on the phone, uh, and they have been very good. To be fair, they you know they've said there is definitely something not right with it, um, and they've actually sent me out a new one. <laughs> um, this they didn't have any of the i9s anymore so this is the remora i12 they've sent me that out at no extra cost um, so yeah really great service by those guys just hopefully this new one works a bit better than this one has i'll, um, I'll keep you keep you updated um, this one has been it's been kind of working it's been keeping the fish at you know a stable temperature but it's meant to keep it the water within about half a degree and it, it's been fluctuating by more like two degrees. So I've got one underwater return, goes right down into this corner. I'm not sure if you'll even see it down there. Um, but that, I've got about 7,000 litres an hour going through that return and it actually gives a really good flow on the pond. You'll see, well, I'm not getting any foam sort of building up on here it kind of makes a sort of circular motion and any sort of foam on the top ends up in that skimmer so it's working really well at keeping the pond nice and clear the only thing I would say is if I'd thought about it I perhaps would have put a second return in that corner coming this way uh, just to give myself some options for the future right another thing I did get totally wrong was this pipe work run for this air source heat pump uh, I put this all in and I don't know if anybody's seen my air source heat pump video but I had all kinds of problems with it. As you can see I've now got some brackets on there but because I didn't put it close enough to the shed when I built it I've had to put bits of wood in between it. It all looks a bit naff but <laughs> it's basically what I've done is I left it all unsupported and then the weight of the pipe work was putting pressure on the joints and making it leak. You know, it's nothing to do with the problems I've been having with the air source heat pump. You can see it is none of it's leaking anymore anyway. So I've got a trickle in and out running. Um, this is three stage to claw out and then one of these EA units as well. I did just have that EA unit on my old pond but I found it was letting chlorine through it so it's now running through both. Um, I'm not getting any chlorine going through it at that speed now. I will be swapping this for a big blue at some point, although in the short term I'm going to get this in the shed probably tomorrow so it's at least out the way on my patio. So this is the shower that I've got in the pond, uh, it's a one metre shower from JBR Plastics. Uh, really impressed with it, the guys delivered it really quickly. Um, the only thing I did get a bit wrong is I asked it to be made with an inch and a half spray bar, they normally come with a two inch. 
I don't know why I didn't just keep it with a two inch and do all my pipe working two inch, but for some reason I decided I wanted it in an inch and a half. Anyway, it runs absolutely fine. Uh, I did have to drill a few more holes in the spray bar because it was putting quite a lot of back pressure on the pump. The water was spraying out so fast. Um, so that's a 20,000 litre an hour pump running at 75%. It might be 80%. But at some point in the future, I'm going to swap that over to the two inch pipe. Uh, it's totally full with ceramic media. Uh, there's a couple of different ones in there. I think it took five 10 kilo boxes. Uh, but it's been working really well since it's been up and running. Um, my parameters are really good now. Ammonia and nitrite, both, both zero now. And I'm up in the feed slowly. So yeah, really happy with it so far. I mean, as you can see, my garden is still an absolute state um, and the pond's still not looking the prettiest in the world, but it's all still work in progress and hopefully, you know, in a couple more weeks time, it'll be looking, it'll be looking a little bit nicer. I'm intending probably to clad the outside of this. I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to do it with decking boards or some of that stone effect tiles that a lot of people use. Uh, so hopefully when it's done, uh, it, it's going to look really nice and I'm intending to put a pergola over the top as well just to give it a little bit of shade because uh, I'm in full sun here all day uh, at the moment there's not really any algae growing but I'm sure I probably will get some at some point 